super stoked about this uh, part I, this is one I've been really anticipating lately I finally pulled the trigger on the car or on the part I should say uh, about a couple weeks ago and it was pretty fast shipping um, it comes from I think somewhere in Australia uh, and I was kind of worried that it was gonna be delayed from customs and stuff like that but I got it in about a week and a half so if you guys really are interested in it um, I would definitely hit them up alrighty guys so I've already done a little bit of the work. I started on it yesterday, just kind of removing the center console of the car, um, as you can guys see kind of there. Uh, it's a super simple process if you guys never have removed the center console of the GTO. Um, all you really have to do is remove the uh, two center console that's in the actual center console uh, bolts. There's two 10 millimeter, I think. And then also there's a couple in between, actually, And then there is two uh, bolts actually right in here in this like uh, cubby area, I guess you would say. And then these two bolts uh, that are screwed in right here. And the it actually just then pulls right off and you kind of can just pull it off apart. And don't forget to uh, actually disconnect the wires from the window switches and stuff like that and the traction control uh, buttons. So other than that, uh, it's actually really simple. Um, should take you no more than like a couple minutes. And after that, you have access. Um, I don't have actually the boot anymore. Um, so you're, if you still have a stock shifter, you're gonna have this like yellow, white, plastic or rubber looking thing that's gonna be over the shift boot. Uh, since I've already replaced uh, my shifter a couple times, uh, I actually have gotten rid of it and I just, you know, they're kind of a pain to put back on. So I kind of just got rid of it um, in general. So you're going to have that and then you'll have a, like a more of a plastic uh, mold plate like right here. And you remove that and it's, I think it's a couple bolts if I remember correctly. And then you actually have access to your real shifter. And then on the shifter part, you are going to have uh, four bolts. So it's going to be one, two and then three, four. So what I did is I actually cut a square, like I squared off like this. Uh, so what I actually did up here was I just cut a hole up here just so I could access those bolts. If you can, you can drop the trans is what I've read and you can fit like an Allen key up there because these are Allen keys usually and basically just unthread it that way or you could just do the cheap and easy way like I did and just cut the hole. Anyway, so that's what I did. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and remove this shifter and then we'll go ahead and talk about the S1 shifter. Okay hey guys, so quick update. So I ended up getting the shifter off and taking off this basically, I forget what the instructions say. Let me grab the instructions real quick. But the first step in removing it is to basically remove uh, the offset lever which is basically this thing. Um, so what I went ahead and did is I took a uh, punch and I basically punched it out. And basically what they give you is this, uh, their, your own offset lever. And what we're gonna do is gonna go ahead and slide this one on right like this. Someone, something like this. I think it's like that. Should just slide on there. So slides on there just like that and basically you gonna they provide you a punch you're gonna punch in that little piece and then basically you are set uh, but first what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go ahead and remove the reverse lockout um, sensor right here uh, this whole thing they give you a little plate to block it off um, but it looks like I'm gonna have to go underneath the car and from what I was looking at actually uh, 
I wish, you know, from the pictures I saw when I was in uh, researching this, you know, pretty thoroughly, I, you know, saw that, you know, some guys had some complete interiors uh, with the car. And I was thinking, okay, this thing's just gonna slide right in. And there is absolutely no way in heck that this is just gonna slide in. It doesn't even fit in the hole. It kind of just sits exactly like that. So, uh, kind of screwed on that point. So what I'm gonna end up having to do is, I already cut out the little hole like I stated. Um, what I'm gonna have to do is, I already see where I'm gonna be touching. Um, basically, all I have to do is just cut out this little section right here um, where that plate was, and basically then just, uh, it should slide right in. I should still be able to, you know, fit it within this section. I don't have to cut this. I'm not really too worried about that and you know the plate and it the shifter does sit back enough to where I don't have to really worry about that um, so for any of you guys that are wanting to do this um, you will have to do that um, in your street car really um, I mean I guess you could basically you know create like a little metal plate to kind of block it off uh, if you're really super worried about it but the shifter looks like it still maintains the factory uh, shift position to where you can still fit the boot on and everything like that so um, you know but eventually I think I'm gonna end up taking this out right here and kind of go into a whole like you know race car style um, center console I'm actually gonna run to our AutoZone right now and I'm gonna get some uh, RTV because I need some uh, gasket sealer for the outside. And then we're gonna go ahead and remove the reverse lockout and hopefully go from there. Okay, so I went ahead and uh, cut the rest of the transmission tunnel uh, just so that I had a little bit more clearance. Um, it is looks like you do have to do this, so just beware. And then I went ahead and replaced the uh, reverse lockout. So, and I put the plate that it, uh, they provide on it I think it's just a 13 millimeter nut and it kind of just goes over don't forget some RTV around it just so that you have a perfect seal so next step is I'm gonna go ahead and use this uh, pin or dowel pin whatever I guess and or punch and go ahead and punch it in and punch the offset lever I guess what it's called um, go ahead and punch that in and then we're gonna go ahead and RTV the outside and go ahead and put the plate on and go from there I only got whatever this is called I keep forgetting what this is called but uh, basically got this uh, push the pin in uh, hammered it down a little bit uh, if you guys are doing this at home just try to start it outside the car and then kind of just align it up um, this is flat on the back side so you can just push against it and it'll and kind of just eyeball it a little bit but the dowel pin does uh, you're able to see through it or down it so if, as long as you can just see the bottom you're fine so go ahead and put that on um, and then I went ahead and put some RTV around the whole thing. Um, next step is to going to be to put the base plate on. That's somewhere right here. And here it is. So we're going to go ahead and put this on just like that. And going to go ahead and put these three countersunk bolts in uh, that they, apply, uh, they supply. Uh, so go ahead and put that on and then basically uh, move on to the next step. So once those th uh, this plate is secured, you're going to go ahead and put another layer of sealant on and then basically put this next layer on, uh, this next plate on. So next uh, step is to get on, go ahead and make sure that it is in neutral. Um, from what I was reading, basically you want this uh, all the way back like this and all the way forward. So you can't go any forward anymore. And once we have this on there, we are going to go ahead and just kind of slide it in. finish the install uh, it's pretty simple um, after that it's just the three bolts like I had stated and um, basically just plops right in and you uh, Allen keys on uh, and then what I went ahead and I didn't film but I've been trying to work on is trying to get the center console to fit uh, what I ended up having to do was basically cut the like I guess ashtray or like this like change tray I guess right here I had to cut it completely out and the only thing that's in there now is the, like the uh, rubber like uh, cover um, so it looks like it's still in but it's really you know kind of you can see it just pops right off and it's completely exposed underneath 
but I thought that, you know, I wanted to make it look like it still was in there. So, uh, but yes, yeah, I had to cut that out. Um, kind of was no way around that. Um, but other than that, it kind of slided, uh, it kind of fit right together. Uh, the uh, shift boot, um, I had to modify a little bit. I basically, I don't know if you guys can see this, but I had to cut right here for the uh, reverse um, lockout uh, or reverse indicator switch right here on the shifter. I had to cut the, I had to trim this piece. I just took a Dremel and did it. Uh, but other than that, it, you know, I, like I said, it looks good. Um, still like has like the factory feel, but and now it is completely um, sequential style. <clears throat> so uh, let's go ahead and go for a drive real quick and see how it is. fast forward about seven months I think I think it was like August or September was my last race anyways but I threw in a couple clips of me driving it uh, the installation um, like I showed you guys was super simple so it's a really great shifter and a lot of people had a lot of comments about it asking me a ton of questions about it um, for my aspect of it it is great for racing um, you can do things that H pattern shifters don't do like um, I don't have to worry when on a racetrack and turning in and uh, worrying about the hitting the apex of the turn or doing any of that um, I can just downshift and the downshift capabilities in this uh, shifter is amazing um, I never have to worry about hit missing shifts uh, you know the peace of mind uh, in the fact that when you go to hit a shift and you pull back on it it really feels like it engages the shift um, the gear actually it uh, doesn't feel like some of the H patterns where you feel like you're in gear but sometimes it like still grinds or you just feel like it's like holding on for like dear life to that gear uh, you know I really like that aspect of it I really like the aspect that it was bolt-on and it was super easy to install um, it can be daily driven a lot of you guys have asked that question if it can be daily driven it for sure can o overall I really do like the shifter if you guys really like the video, um, make sure to drop a like on the video. Also, uh, I've got a ton of stuff coming up for the GTO and 2020. Uh, 2020 is going to be an awesome year for uh, me and just the my cars in general. Uh, it is going to be a crazy year of racing and a ton of things are happening. Uh, sneak peek, I have a three fifth. I have a 315 30 18 uh, currently fitted on the car in the front uh, so it is going to be the widest GTO um, in the front at least for I think in the world I don't think anyone's fit a 315 uh, so yeah so make sure you guys subscribe to my channel to keep up with everything and I'll catch you guys later